this is episode number 54 of the Race, Religion, Racism series that Pastor Price presented in the late 90s. Now, this episode focuses on Pastor Price using scripture to show people of color in the Bible and the importance of why we need to know there were people of color in the Bible and the ramifications it could have had and does have once hearing about it in present times. Now, at the end of the video, I'll give my perspective on why some people want to overlook factual truth concerning Christianity and the color of a person's skin. Though the overall perspective is that skin color doesn't matter to God, but for society and the way all of us see ourselves, then it still comes down to racism. And please do not judge my thumbnail or anyone else's thumbnail because I've made the mistake of doing that myself before commentating, but thoroughly see and then react or comment to the video and please be respectful. Much appreciated. Thank you. All right now, Genesis chapter 41, verse 45. <clears throat> And Pharaoh called Joseph. You remember, Jacob had 12 sons. One of his sons was named Joseph. His brothers became jealous of Joseph and sold their own brother into slavery. That sure sounds familiar. But we're not going there. I just said it sounds familiar. But they sold him into slavery. And he ended up in Egypt, the land of Ham. So we could say the land of black. Now, I meant to say this a moment ago, and I, I, I want to I stick this pin here because this will help people to understand black could not be a curse because, as I said, Noah pronounced a curse. God never pronounced a curse. But even if there was such a thing as a curse that another man could put on another man to change his color. You pretty bad dude. <laughs> you got that kind of power, you can just put a curse on somebody and change them, their color. I mean, it looks like if you could change their color, you could change it from male to female. Okay, the point was that, that Noah cursed Ham's son Canaan because of something that Noah perceived that Ham had done. And, Ham, and Noah couldn't curse Ham because God blessed Ham, and what God blesses, you can't curse. So he did, he went to his grandson, Canaan. But like I said, Ham had four sons. He had Canaan, Cush, Mizraim, and Put. So if he, if he, if he cursed Canaan black, then how did Mizraim become black? And how did the Cushites get black? How did the Ethiopians get black? Can you see the fallacy of this lying conspiracy that they've tried to perpetrate against us? God created everybody the way that they are. Yeah, nobody is the result of a curse. Okay? Now, Joseph was sold into Egypt. But he was a man of God. He walked in the light of the knowledge he had at that time. And God honored him and protected him. And so God raised him up out of jail, out of a false accusation. He was serving in a household, and the woman of the house tried to seduce the man sexually, and he maintained his integrity, said, no, I can't do this. And she lied on him, and her husband believed her against Joseph, and Joseph was put in prison. As a result of it, God worked while Joseph was in the prison and gave him favor with the person that was in charge of the prison, ultimately extracted Joseph out of the prison because of Joseph's interpretation of a dream that Pharaoh had. Now, verse 45 says, And Pharaoh called Joseph's name Zephnath Peaniah, and he gave him as a wife Asenath, the daughter of Potipharah, priest of On. So Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. Now, this priest of On was an Egyptian. And the Egyptians were people of color. They were black. They were not white. They were not Charlton Heston white. Amen. And please believe me, that is not 
that is not meant to be a negative against Mr. Heston. Please believe me. And so if Mr. Heston is watching this program, I, I, don't, I don't mean that unkindly, but I think you'll be able to understand what I'm talking about. Okay, because all of our movies have portrayed all the Egyptians basically as white. Ten Commandments, all the Egyptians were white. And that's untrue. That's untrue. And thank God for Mr. Spielberg to try to do something that helped clarify the thing and came out with this movie not too long ago, Prince of Egypt, and finally got everybody the right color. And see, let, 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 let me give a plug for Mr. Spielberg, because here, here's what happened. See, when you, if you saw, how many of you saw Prince of Egypt? See, when you saw Prince of Egypt, you probably thought you were looking at a cartoon. Because it was animated. And we have come, unfortunately, to think that animation means cartoon. It does not mean cartoon. Animation simply means you don't use live actors, but it's not cartoon. Just because cartoons don't use live actors, we have transported that over into that movie like Prince of Egypt or other movies, and we think that that means it's a cartoon. No, 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 no. Animation simply means you don't use live actors. But Mr. Spielberg is a smart man. Real smart. He knew white folks, there's no way in the world they're going to take another movie called Prince of Egypt with live actors black. Amen. No. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And no, no, they ain't ready for that. See, they're not ready for that. The stereotyping is too bad. So he had to do it in animation, but I give him credit. Give the man credit. And I hope he made $26 trillion on it, too. <laughs> To just to have the kind of nerve to even want to do something and do it right instead of lying to us some more. Maybe I'll get nominated for an Academy Award. <laughs> Is this my best side? Okay, now watch this now. So Joseph was given an Egyptian wife. Again, as I've said so often, and we said last time, God has never been opposed to interracial or interethnic marriages. Now, I again, and I keep wanting to say this because I want to be clearly understood, I'm not promoting it one way or the other. I'm already married, don't plan to get unmarried. Are you following what I mean? So I'm not pushing for, I'm just simply trying to get people to, find, to, people to think about what difference does it make? Why should it make a difference to you and it doesn't make a difference to the man that created us? Amen. Because all God had to do is hide all this stuff. He didn't have to put it down in his book. He didn't have to put it on the front page. He could have, all that could have happened, we would never would have known it. So why did God tell us about it? He told us about it because he wants us to be free, always. And not succumb to the lie and the temptation to lie to people and make other people think they're better than, which is bad for them, and make other people think they're less than, and that's bad for them. Both are robbed in the process. So, Joseph was given an Egyptian woman. Joseph was from Jacob. Jacob was from Abraham. They were from the Shemite line. Shem, Ham, Japheth. Those were the three sons of Noah. They were the only ones there after the flood, and the whole earth was overpopulated or populated by those three boys. Okay? So, here is a Shemite who is marrying a Cushite or a, an Egyptian who, was, who came out of Mizraim, one of Ham's sons. Now, Joseph had two sons by this woman, Asenath, Manasseh and Ephraim. Look at Genesis 41 and verse 50 this time, 50 and 52. We looked at this last time, but I want to go over it, and then we'll move on. 50, verse 50. And to Joseph were born two sons before the years of famine came, whom Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On, bore to him. Now, 
I absolutely am astounded in God's technicalities. I, I love how technical God is and how he is always attempting to give us prompts to help us see the truth. And we're so stupid that we just pass right by the road marks that God places that we, so that we could see and not fall victim to the lies of superior or inferior. Now, now, now look at this. Verse 50. And Joseph and two Joseph were born two sons before the years of famine came, whom Asenath, Asenath the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On, bore to him. Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh, for God has made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. And the name of the second he called Ephraim, for God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. Now go back to verse 50 again. It says, and to Joseph were born two sons. Now that's the subject of the, of this, of the verse. The fact that Joseph had two sons. Period. That's it. But notice how God always keeps before us so that we don't fall victim to the lies that might be promulgated about who people were. Notice what he says there. He says, and to Joseph were born two sons before the years of famine came, whom Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On, bore to him. We all, he already told us that in verse 45. You don't have to repeat that. We already knew who his wife's name was. We knew who her father's name was. Why do you keep telling us about he was a priest of On? Why do you keep telling us about the man's name? Because God wants to zero you in on the fact that she was an Egyptian. And God didn't have any problem about a Shemite and a, an Egyptian getting together and marrying and having children. Not only that, oh, are you ready for this? Manasseh and Ephraim became leaders of Jewish tribes sent to spy out the land of Canaan. You ever hear about the land of Canaan? All right, go to Numbers chapter 13. I wonder how many Jewish families have told their children that there are some black Jews. I wonder if they tell them that there was a black tribe. All in the Bible, this is the thing that just gets in your craw. Been here all the time, but they've led us around the garden path telling us about everything but those things that we needed to know to squelch all these lies that Satan has promulgated against people to hinder seeking the lost. While we're fighting about who's superior and who's inferior, people are dying and going to hell. How many people have gone to hell because white folks and black folks, primarily white folks, because they're the ones that inst instituted it, not the black folks. They have been the victims. But while we've been going back and forth trying to survive, how many people have died and gone to hell? That's right. Looking at us and saying, you all have the answer, and look at how you're fighting each other. Yep. I wonder in eternity, are those people going to stand and give a testimony that they would have come for when they saw all that infighting? They saw the discrepancy between the fact Jesus is the way and the church was divided over something that nobody had any control over Amen. and had no say-so about, Amen. about nothing. All right, Numbers chapter 13, verse 1. And the Lord spoke to Moses. Now, remember, remember now, Joseph was a Shemite. And the Egyptians came from Ham. Okay? And Joseph, a Shemite, married an Egyptian. So that was an inter-ethnic or inter-racial marriage. Now, watch this. 
Joseph had two sons, remember? What were their names? Manasseh and Ephraim. He had two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. Now watch this. Verse 1, chapter 13, book of Numbers. And, and the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the children of Israel. Uh-oh, watch this now. Children of Israel. What children? Children. children of Israel. Pick up on this now. Verse 2. Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the children of Israel. Watch now. From each tribe of their fathers, you shall send a man, every one a leader among them. Now, how many children did Jacob have? Twelve. They became known as the children of Israel. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. So there are 12 tribes. Now watch this now. Let me get that. Let me look at verse 2 again. Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the children of Israel. Children of Israel. I want you to keep that in mind, children of Israel. From each tribe of their fathers used to send a man. So if you're going to send a man from each tribe, it looks like it's going to end up being 12 men. Is that pretty good mathematics? Okay, it's going to be 12. All right, now watch this, verse 3. So Moses sent them from the wilderness of Paran according to the command of the Lord. All of them, men, who were all, get this now, who were heads of the children of Israel. Now, who do we say and or believe that the Israelites were and are? Go on and say it. Ain't nobody going to bite you. Don't act like you're scared. The Jews, right? All right, the Jewish people. All right, watch this now. Verse 4, now there were, now these were their names. Oh, get this now. Now these were their names. From the tribe of Reuben, Shemuaye, the son of Zakur. Verse 5, from the tribe of Simeon, Shaphat, the son of Horai. Verse 6, from the tribe of Judah, Caleb, the son of Jephunneh. Verse 7, from the tribe of Issachar. Igel, the son of Joseph. Verse 8, from the tribe of Ephraim. Ah, so. Ephraim was a tribe of Israel. And Ephraim was the son of an Egyptian and a Shemite, which means an interracial couple. And the Egyptians were black. So it's very possible that Ephraim had a little bit of color in his skin. <laughs> Verse 8, from the tribe of Ephraim, Hoshea, the son of Nun. From the tribe of Benjamin, Paltai, the son of Raphu. Number 10, verse 10, from the tribe of Zebulun, Gadaliel, the son of Sodai. Verse 11, from the tribe of Joseph, that is from the tribe of Manasseh. That's one of Joseph's boys. Is that right? Manasseh was a tribe of Israel. And if they were ever a tribe, they would have to be a tribe today. Hmm, sure got quiet there. No, let me move on here. Verse 11, from the tribe of Joseph, that is, from the tribe of Manasseh, Gadai, the son of Susay. From the tribe of Dan, Amiel, the son of Gamali. From the tribe of Asher, Sether, the son of Michael. From the tribe of Naphtali, Nabai, Nabai the son of Volsi. Verse 15, from the tribe of Gad, Geuel, the son of Machai, Verse 16, these are the names of the men who Moses sent to spy out the land. Black folk was in the group who spied out the land. Now, they haven't told us that. They didn't tell us. The white folk didn't tell the white people, 
and the white folk didn't tell the black people, and the black people didn't know it. <laughs> so the black people told the black people what the white folk told them, that everybody was white. Now again, don't, 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 don't get personal on me. We're trying, to find, we're trying to ferret out truth, okay? Watch this now. Because see, you, 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 it, 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 you, it can't help but raise your level of appreciation and esteem when you find out that folk you thought were dirt find out they were somebody. Amen. You can't find this information out and it not change your attitude about people. It should have been done in the beginning. But instead of doing it, they left the garbage detail for me. All right, verse 16. These are the names of the men whom Moses sent to spy out the land. And Moses, oh, my God. Oh. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho. 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 Joshua fit the battle of Jericho. Mm -hmm. Anybody ever hear of Joshua? You always thought Joshua was white. Joshua was black. Verse 16, these are the names of the men whom Moses sent to spy out the land, and Moses called Hoshea, the son of Nun, Joshua. Now, 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 go, uh, go back here. Uh, anyway. Let me go get my notes. Verse 16. But listen, notice what it says now. Joshua, I mean Moses called Hoshea the son of Nun, Joshua. Now Joshua was one of the men. Look at verse 8. And where did Hoshea or Joshua come from? came from Ephraim. Where did Ephraim come from? From that black Egyptian woman and that Shemite man, Joseph. And I'm here to tell you from genetic experience that if there be black in the blood, the children are not going to come out European white. They may be light, but they ain't going to be European white. Huh? So Joshua was one of the ones sent out to spy out the land. Now, let's go to 1 Chronicles chapter 7. Now, see, again, the, the thing that's important about this is not that anybody's better than anybody else, but just the fact that we, 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 we were included. And, and, and I think it's a travesty of justice that all these years, for 2,000 years, we didn't even know it. I, I use 2,000 as from the time that Christ came. That's how long the church has been in existence. And all this time, we didn't even know that we had a place in the scheme of things with God. And that was part of the thing that was used to justify enslaving black Africans was because they're cursed and they, they don't have any part in anything. Oh, yes, we do. Yes, we do. And this information is not designed to make you feel better than anybody else, but just make you feel good about yourself. Make you feel good about your Heavenly Father. No, He didn't leave you out. That you're not an afterthought with God. He didn't just wake up one morning and say, oh, my God, I got to do something about them black folks. No, you were in the plan from the beginning. And maybe, just maybe, that's why there are more people of color on the planet than there are people not of color. I've traveled all over this world. I've had the opportunity to minister. We went to India. 
and I saw folk there blacker than me. I mean black skin, not no suntan skin. I'm talking about black skin, straight black hair. And then I saw some of them with bushy hair, and they were black skin. All over India, all over Africa, all over the islands of the sea, all over the Caribbean, and millions of them here in America. Go to the Fiji Islands, they're not white skin. Go to Tonga, they're not white skin. All I'm saying is that I don't, God must have a purpose in this because it seemed like he made more chocolate-covered biscuits than he did vanilla-covered biscuits. <laughs> God must like chocolate cake because he made a lot of it. <laughs> All right, 1 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 22. Beginning with verse 2. The, then Ephraim, the father, then Ephraim, their father, mourned many days, and his brethren came to comfort him. And when he went into his wife, she conceived and bore a son, and he called his name Bariah, because tragedy had come upon his house. Now his daughter was Shira, who built lower and upper Beth Horan and Usen Shira. And Rapha was his son, as well as Resheph and Tila, his son. Tehan, his son, Laadan, his son, Amenahud, his son, Elishama, his son, Nun, his son, and Joshua, his son. It is. It's amazing. We didn't read the, we didn't read the, the, the genealogies thinking, well, ain't nothing interesting in there. Oh, that's very interesting. Don't you realize that after Moses left the scene, that the man in charge of all 12 tribes was Joshua, the son of Nun, who came out of Ephraim, who was a result of an Egyptian and a Shemite, Joseph's son. Well, I just, uh, you know, I just don't see why Dr. Price is wasting all this time dealing with that. Uh, what, what difference does it make? Well, I understand. See, it, it, all of a sudden now, it doesn't make a difference because it's not about you. I, I pick up on that. I see. I mean, I can understand that rationale. See, it's about us now, so now it, now it don't make a difference. But it did make a difference as long as you were in charge. Then it was very important. So important that you even put signs up and said, white only. Don't tell me, don't lie to me and tell me it doesn't make a difference. Amen. It makes a difference when it's in your favor. But if it's not in your favor, then well, we don't need to discuss this. It's, it's tut, tut, brother Price, brother Price, brother Price. You were doing so well before you started on it. But we don't need to. Yes, we do. Have you ever found anybody more lovable than me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Go to Genesis chapter 48, if you please. And all of this has been in the Bible all this time. Oh, my God. Now, Jacob, or Israel, was, was head of his family. The 12 tribes came out of Jacob. Okay? And Jacob accepted Ephraim and Manasseh as his own sons. Yes, he did. Genesis chapter 48, verse 5. Well, let's start at verse 1. Now it came to pass, after these things that Joseph was told, indeed your father is sick, and he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And Jacob was told, look, 
your son Joseph is coming to you. And Israel, or Jacob, strengthened himself and sat up on the bed. Then Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan and bless me. And said to me, Behold, I will make you fruitful and multiply you. And I will make of you a multitude of people and give this land to your descendants after you as an everlasting possession. And now, Jacob speaking now, Israel speaking. And now your two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, who were born to you in the land of Egypt before I came to you in Egypt, are mine. As Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. Jacob took those two black boys in just like they were his own blood. Because they were. They were from his son. Made no difference. They, they, they're mine. They're mine just like Simeon and Reuben, who he actually birthed to his wife. They're mine. He didn't have a problem taking Manasseh and Ephraim. What's your problem? I don't understand that. And Jacob wasn't even born again. Jacob wasn't even filled with the Spirit. And he could take those two black boys into his family and say, they're mine. What's your problem? Amen. You call yourself born again and spirit-filled. What's your problem? Manasseh huh, is not only mentioned in the Old Testament, but Manasseh is mentioned in the New Testament. Turn to the book of Revelation, the seventh chapter. Sure enough, didn't know this. And I'm telling you, I, every time I think about it, I kick myself in the backside. I really do. I kick myself with both feet at the same time. Said, how could you have been so ignorant, so stupid, so dumb not to have seen it? And I mean, I have read the New Testament over 180 times. And, and didn't even see it, as smart as me is. <laughs> That's why we need to go over there. But you see, when you're so conditioned to everything being white, see, that's, see, you, you, see you, you, you folk of other ethnicities, whites and reds and browns and yellows, see, you, 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 it's difficult for you to relate. And I can understand that. That's why I have compassion on you. Because I know you, if you haven't been in the condition, you, you can't even understand how a brainwashing has been so thoroughly done on us. Amen. That when we look, we see white. Even when it's black, we see white. <laughs> Stimulus response. We're the prime example of Pavlov's dog. We salivate even when there is no food in sight. We've been conditioned to do it. And so every time I've read, I read everything I read. It's white. Everything is white. Everybody's white. God is white. Everybody's white. So I never even... I never, even look to see if I was in there or if anybody else was in there. It's like the whole universe is white. Revelation chapter 7. And uh, this, let's begin reading with verse 1 because this, this is awesome. Verse 1. Now, I have a question for you. Where is the book of Revelation found? Old Testament or New Testament? Yeah. I beg your pardon. Yeah. Oh, so if it's New Testament, doesn't that mean it's for us? Yeah. Excuse me? Yeah. I didn't hear that. Yeah. What? Oh, okay, I just wanted to know, be sure. Okay, I'll watch it in verse, verse 1. After these things, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth. This is John on the Isle of Patmos. That the wind should not blow on the earth, on the sea, or on any tree. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees till we have sealed Oh, God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Until we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. 
Now watch it. Servants, servants of our God. Get that now. Servants of our God. Verse 4, And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000. Not, now watch, notice what it doesn't say. It doesn't say of all the tribes of the earth. It says of all the tribes of the children of Israel that were sealed. 144,000. This is a special group for a special situation. The, the emphasis I want to make and I want us to see is that these were the children of Israel whom we have come to know as the Jews. Is that correct? Yeah. Verse 4, And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. Verse 5, Of the tribe of Judah, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Reuben, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Gad, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Asher, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Manasseh, oh, what? Of the tribe of Manasseh? I heard that name before. Manasseh. Oh, yeah. Manasseh was a tribe, and 12,000 were sealed out of that tribe, and that tribe was called a tribe of the children of Israel. You in there? We're in there. Probably the Jews don't even know this. I hope nobody has a coronary when they find out that it was one of them things in the woodpile. I don't need to say anything else, do I? The folks that know the code will know what I'm talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Listen to this now. Listen, 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 listen. Of the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000 were sealed. Where did Manasseh come from? Manasseh was one of Joseph's sons who was the result of an Egyptian and a Shemite marriage. So we got relatives in Israel. See, I'm talking about from a Bible point of view. Now, I realize that there are some people that talk about what they call the black Jews, the Falashas, and I think they came from Ethiopia. I, I don't know all of the history there. I'm going by what the Bible says because the Bible is our basis and our foundation. And here they are, here you are, here our relatives are. If you're not, our relatives were. They came out of Joseph and Ashenath, an Egyptian, who came out of the land of Ham, Moving right along, Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, was a black man. Joseph's father-in-law would mean that Moses' wife must have been the daughter of Moses' father-in-law. So if the father-in-law was black, it's relatively safe to assume that his daughter must have come out of him, so she must have had his DNA and his chromosome and his genetic coding. It seems reasonable to believe. And I'm out of time. So this episode focused on Pastor Price using scriptures to show people of color in the Bible and the importance of why we need to know there were people of color in the Bible. And the ramifications from it is that the past 400 plus years, people of color have been lied to and stripped of their heritage in order to bolster and empower people of a lighter skin hue. Meaning the whiter you are, the better your status. And not only in just America, but around the world for which these alleged countries got their marching orders to form the blueprint of racism. But it wasn't always that way, which is why Pastor Price mentions the pyramids, which were built by people of color who are supposed to be lacking intelligence, yet 
make structures that are impossible to remake, especially in the face of the technology man has had at his, at his disposal today. So why would people say that this isn't important or that this is that the, this has nothing to do with Christianity or why bring up the past? We're in the present. Leave the past alone. It's done. Well, first of all, it's important to tell the truth over believing a lie. And that's what's been going on for hundreds of years. And too many people, especially Christians, believe, believe the lie over truth. We believe the lie that uh, Egyptians were white, as Pastor Price pointed out in the blockbuster movie, The Ten Commandments. Hey, I recall believing this when I was a kid, along with my relatives, that the portrayal of people that we saw on TV to some degree was true. So when we saw white people, they were like the stamp of approval and anyone else was suspect. And it's important to bring up the past to learn and not live in it for as the saying goes, History, re history repeats itself. And this saying is relative to atrocities and evils that are routinely repeated because we don't learn from the past. And somehow when it comes to history, we overlook lies as being evil. So what does racism have to do with Christianity? Well, racism is about lies, which is a sin. And in general terms, when we speak about racism, we mean it in the terms of bigotry and prejudice even though the nature of the meaning is about the class structure in America where white people have an advantage that is systemically incorporated into the Constitution. Therefore, when Pastor Price spoke on the subject of racism, it was not out of order in, speech, in speaking about Christianity because it was about rape, which is a sin. When the slave master had his way with any black female at his disposal, if she did resist his advantages or, or excuse me, advances, she would be flogged or killed. And the same would be definitely said of any black man who tried to step in, even if it was her husband. Kidnapping, which is a sin. Before America's uh, unique way of slavery, there was the slavery that the Bible mentions and refers to. Whereas this type of slavery was about being an indentured servant, servant, excuse me which meant that if you owed a debt to someone and were unable to pay, then you became that person's slave for up to a period of seven years, or at least before if you were able to pay it off, which is where we get the uh, situation here in America that if we owe, it remains on our credit for seven years. And here's an extra note, extra note on that. If at any time that you haven't paid on that debt for some reason and all of a sudden say you made a payment and it's been six years, then the process of the countdown time goes back to year one. And that's fact. But getting back to what I was saying, kidnapping was a very serious offense in the process and in terms of slavery for which America greedily did once they uh, became arrogant and figured why bargain for slaves when we can take them by force? And also, I want to add, when I mentioned they bargain, the black people who did the bargaining was out of order as well, because all they saw was the love of money instead of dealing with their own people. The correct way, which was um, debts to be paid off and via war with those captured, they were to become indentured servants for seven years and afterwards they could go back to their land or communal people. So again, it was wrong to sell them off to another to another nation, let, a, let alone another continent far, far away. So using the Bible to lie, which is a sin for which the slave owners routinely did, they used the scriptures that pertain to slavery and construed, construed it to manipulate and misrepresent God to their own desires of power and money and lust of the flesh. See, Deuteronomy 4.2 says this, You shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither ye shall diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. So yes, using the Bible to lie is a sin. Therefore, torture and definitely murder is sinful. No one is to be treated that way, even in the realm of slavery, especially biblically speaking, as I just mentioned, that America's form of slavery and what the Bible says about slavery is totally different from, for the word says this, uh, Colossians 4.1, Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that ye also have a master in heaven. 
So to say that a black is not to marry a white is sinful for God. Or for God ordained a man to marry a woman, for he did not put a stipulation of color, but he did say to marry someone equally yoked, meaning someone who believes in the true and living God. And remember, anything you do or say outside of the will of God is sin. To say that a culture of people is better than another is sin against is sin again. No one is better than another for all cultures a man are made in the image of God. And the reason the Jewish people are his chosen people is because they accepted him first amongst many cultures of people that refused him. And yet there was a Nazi re regime who perpetrated their evil agenda and of them being the master race. But there is no master race, only the race of people that God made in his image. And finally, most of this is about the love of money. It was the love of, mo love of money that white people came from uh, from Europe and stole America from the Indians. It was a love of money that white people went to the nations of Africa and kidnapped them and brought them into slavery, even though they initially bargained with corrupt tribal leaders who should not have sold their adversaries to foreigners because their motives was also the love of money. And what does the Bible say about the love of money? That it's a sin. So, for those of you who say that this subject and this series is not about Christianity and is not about Christ, are the same type of people who live in a bubble and uses the word love as a weapon to legitimize your racist ide ideology, just the way a homosexual uses the word love to legitimize his or her so-called stance and saying that their way is acceptable to our Jesus. So before you open your mouths, and say this isn't biblical, you need to check yourselves, no said.